this edition of Killing with Cubase, we have a super tip using multiple projects at once. Okay, um, for this particular session, um, well, we're going to assume that we're missing a file. And uh, the, the band guy goes, hey, where's my or band guy? The uh, guitar player goes, hey, where's my guitar solo? And I look all over this track here, hypothetically, and I go, or this project, and I go, uh-oh, I don't see a guitar solo, but maybe I, record, I remember recording it. Well, um, let's just assume we, we know it's on some other project. Like, or, I see if, Let me slow down here. <laughs> let's just say, once again that I've saved multiple versions of this. Maybe this is mix number four. I've, I tweaked a lot and whatnot, but I need to go back to the raw the raw track there. I'm just going to hypothetically just grab some random clip. I don't even know what this is. Um, what we want to do, first you obviously need to find that file, and the best way to do that is to, to save this, to track your, your current mix or whatever, your current project, and, and kill it, and then go through and find... Um, the missing file within the framework of Cubase. And the, you could probably find this file um, looking at your audio folder, possibly the pool, which is control P. Sometimes you see stuff in there. I don't trust this because all kinds of weird things for me always end up in there. I don't know if my way of working is just weird. I think it's because I created a template at the very beginning. And so all the songs end up with the same pool, sorta, depending on what was recorded before it. So it can be really... A real mess. So anyway, actually trying to find a lead guitar, that is a good reason to be careful how you track and uh, by labeling before you hit the record button. But see, like my generic junk here, guitar, that doesn't tell us much. So um, anyway, um, what I you generally do is say, I don't even want to deal with this. And another reason is um, while this can, can help you uh, keep it the... the the, the time frame correct because it has this this business um, this is a good way of working if you were to find it through Windows they're actually find it going to the audio folder and let's just say you went this way and said okay well there's the file I needed if you just import that in you're gonna have to manually um, find the the, the, t the timeline and I I hate manually doing that because it takes years because you you you, you start overthinking everything, and you say, oh, I don't think it's quite time, and then you hear one spot where maybe it is a little weird, and maybe that was the track itself, or maybe it's you. I don't know. I hate doing that. So for me, the best way by far is to open a, a second window. So what I do, if I find it, and let's just say it's, uh, oh, this one. I mean, we're just, I'm just made that up, but what we'll do, I'll go ahead and then and close everything out and start back on my the, the file that I mix or the yeah the project I'm mixing, and what I want to, then I'll go ahead and double click to open up the new guy the, or I should say the guy that has the file we need, and when I click on him, it's going to say do you want to activate this project, and if you know exactly where where um, what file you're looking for do not because what's going to happen there is Cubase is going to unload all the plugins from your previous. Um, project the one you're really mixing and then load all these up and one that's a big waste of time and two this is an older uh project and there, there, maybe there's old plugins you don't have or there's almost always problems of some kind um either way it wastes time and for me i, I almost always i'm changing my setup constantly new plugins because i'm always reviewing new things and sometimes i I've, I've got um, bugs i've worked out but these old ones I, I still have the bug in there so um it can be hellacious or even if you have your latency set wrong um and maybe this particular uh file has tremendous cpu uh usage that could crash your whole computer if you're trying to open a huge project and not enough cpu power so it's always smart just to say no now what that means is this thing will not play if i mean it'll play but you won't hear anything i see actually that's playing the our, our original track still because that's the activated one and you can see this activate business here Maybe there's that one. Yeah, it's, it's on the far left. Um, hopefully you're seeing the same thing then. Um, that guy. Now, if we were to push this button, it would deactivate this one, which is, you know how when you close a file out, you might take 20 seconds to to unload all the RAM and plugins and all that junk. Well, it's going to go through that big old mess, and all you really want to do is say, okay, there's my file I wanted. And so then you could 
copy it, and then you can paste it uh, directly in to, to this thing. Now, for this, I just stole a MIDI track, so that's what I'm going to do, but whatever. And there it goes. And so you can actually look then and say, okay, it's bar 25. And so for this, we can move, go, whoopsie, and go to back to bar 25. Press J to so we can snap exactly to 25 and paste. So that's, this is the highlighted MIDI. There it is. And we have the exact file then. So, okay, everything's saved. So uh, be careful with this Activate Project stuff. But the cool thing about Cubase is it does let you open multiple versions without, or projects without having to um, like overload your computer or anything like that. You just can't listen to them until you activate them. So keep that in mind and um, use that to your advantage because it, it, if you're dealing with other bands especially or if you're like disorganized as I am, which is terrible, then uh, it can really, really save your ass. So I hope that helps. Thanks, guys.